7 months good hairline regrowth with PIX, finasteride, drinking minoxidil, MK677. I started drinking liquid minoxidil daily since I was a non-responder to topical and I couldn't get my hands on the pill. I read that your stomach would destroy most of the minoxidil so I decided I should take more than the recommended pill dose to actually get an effect. I had no idea how much though so I started at 10 mg and went up to 50 mg where I am now with no side effects. Now with no side effects. Also I tried to take 100 mg, 50 mg morning and night, but my feet and face started swelling a lot. Now with no side effects. You disrespect yourself and your nation. You are made of stupid. So oral minoxidil, as in the tablet form lonitin, is currently being used off-label to treat hair loss disorders, primarily androgenetic alopecia. In most cases, the range of this so-called low-dose oral minoxidil that is usually administered comes anywhere between 0.5 mg, even up to 5 mg of oral minoxidil. Now, oral minoxidil has a host of negative side effects coming in at a 20% rate according to a paper titled, quote, Safety of Low-Dose Oral Minoxidil for Hair Loss, a multi-center study of 1,404 patients, unquote. This study was published in the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology in 2021. In most of the negative cases, mild to severe hypertrichosis, which is the growth of body hair, was observed in about 15% of cases. Now, this may not be life-threatening, but the incidence of systemic adverse effects came in at 5.5%. The systemic side effects are the following. Lightheadedness at 1.7%, fluid retention at 1.3%, tachycardia, which is the racing of the heart, at 0.9%, headaches at 0.4%, periorbital edema at 0.3%, and insomnia at 0.2%. This large study with a cohort of 1,404 patients receiving low-dose oral minoxidil treatment provides a comprehensive understanding of the adverse effects associated with this therapy. Both men and women from diverse geographical regions were included, allowing for a broad analysis of potential side effects. So this is a really good study with a large population and varied population. The results show that hypertrichosis, as I mentioned before, being the excessive growth of body hair, was the most common side effect of low-dose oral minoxidil, affecting 20.1% of women and 5.8% of men. The median latency period for hypertrichosis was 60 days for both genders. The use of compounded low-dose oral minoxidil capsules was associated with a higher risk of hypertrichosis, highlighting the importance of carefully controlled compounding pharmacy environments. So this means, depending on where you get your low-dose oral minoxidil from, could possibly contribute to whatever side effects you may get, because different pharmacies or different manufacturing pharmacies, compounding pharmaceutical companies, they have varied processes and varied additives into these tablets that could make them more bioavailable, which in turn could lead to more systemic side effects. Systemic side effects were less common occurring in 5.5% of patients. The researchers claim that these were mostly mild and could be resolved through dose reduction or treatment discontinuation. The most frequent systemic side effect was lightheadedness, fluid retention, and this being primarily leg edema, so a built up of fluid in the leg, tachycardia, the racing of the heart, and headaches. The incidence of these side effects was not directly related to the dose itself, but mostly respective to the patient. So keep this in mind, that the incidences in which these side effects occurred were not dose dependent at all. So we'll talk about this later, a bit more. It should be noted that pericardial effusions, a potentially serious condition where fluid accumulates in the sac around the heart, have been reported in patients treated with a higher dose or high dose oral minoxidil. And what is high dose and what is low dose seems to be kind of up to contention if it is the reality that these sort of side effects are not contingent upon the dose of minoxidil but individual variations in the response to minoxidil, so people's genetics, and maybe they have certain active sulfur transferase enzymes or other things that could contribute to these side effects. So what's high dose minoxidil and what's low dose minoxidil seems to be a bit arbitrary to an extent. 
However, I want you to keep this pericardial effusion in mind when it comes to people who take high doses of minoxidil. Because later we'll be discussing the stupid shit that people do on the internet when it comes to topical minoxidil. You have people right now on the internet also being in real life drinking topical minoxidil especially at high concentrations like five percent which that's insane because one milliliter of five percent topical minoxidil contains about 50 milligrams of minoxidil but we'll talk about this a bit more later anyway researchers in this paper did not observe pericardial effusions luckily but that doesn't mean that this couldn't have happened remember when i mentioned that it did not appear that side effects were dose dependent Based on the data provided in this study, the systemic adverse effects of low-dose oral minoxidil do not appear to be dose-dependent. This is demonstrated in the study through the finding that the occurrence of systemic side effects such as lightheadedness, fluid retention, tachycardia, and headaches were unrelated to the dose administered. This study suggests that systemic side effects could be influenced by individual patient characteristics and genetic variations in the activity of the minoxidil sulfotransferase enzyme rather than the dosage of the medication itself. In the summary of the systemic side effects in table 2, the mean doses that produced the mean doses that produced various side effects such as lightheadedness, fluid retention, tachycardia, and headaches are all over the place. For example, the mean dose that produced lightheadedness was at 0.93 mg for women and 3.9 mg for men, which indicates that these side effects occur at different dosages, suggesting that there's no clear dose dependency. Two side effects. Later in this paper, the researchers state, quote, despite the relatively high incidence of systemic side effects with antihypertensive doses of minoxidil, and they range this between 10 to 40 mg, continuing, we found that systemic side effects associated with low-dose oral minoxidil at less than 5 mg were uncommon and not dose-dependent." This sentence explicitly claims their finding of no dose dependency in the side effect of low-dose oral minoxidil. The authors also propose a hypothesis that, quote, the systemic adverse effects of low-dose oral minoxidil may be influenced by the idiosyncratic patient characteristics and individual genetic variations in the activity of the minoxidil sulfur transferase enzyme, unquote. They're suggesting here that the side effects may be more related to individual patient factors rather than the dosage of the drug. So that's pretty interesting. Because keeping that in mind, it seems absurd how the authors would come away with the overall conclusion, as stated in their conclusion, that low-dose oral minoxidil is well tolerated, especially when people are going to be taking this drug long term, and side effects were not proven to be dose dependent. So if you have a side effect to minoxidil, it may not be the case that, oh, I'll just take less of it, or, you know, I'll just uh, space out when I take it, or take it every other day or whatever it literally is just your genetic composition that makes it incompatible for you to use it and it might put you at a higher risk of developing dangerous conditions like for for instance pericardial effusions which occurs in approximately three percent of patients treated with high dose oral minoxidil and they also mention this in the paper itself however they claim that this is mostly prevalent in patients who have kidney issues who are on dialysis. However, this claim is suspect because, as mentioned before, genetics and individual characteristics are more likely to produce side effects than the dose of minoxidil itself, oral minoxidil itself. So I say all that to say that even with the risks of low-dose oral minoxidil or whatever oral minoxidil, people are now becoming so desperate to get their hands on oral minoxidil that they're drinking topical liquid minoxidil and usually they're doing this at concentrations of five percent which is completely absurd typically a five percent topical minoxidil solution is sold in 60 milliliter bottles with a one milliliter pipette dropper the calculation is pretty straightforward if you have one milliliter of five percent topical minoxidil that contains 50 milligrams of minoxidil per milliliter, then a 60 milliliter bottle will contain 60 times that amount because 60 milliliters 
is 60 times larger than one milliliter. So the calculation would be 50 milligrams over one milliliter times 60 milliliters would give us 3,000 milligrams or three grams of minoxidil in every 60 milliliter bottle of 5% topical minoxidil. Therefore, a 60 milliliter bottle of 5% topical minoxidil contains three grams of minoxidil. However, we know that this is only an estimation and definitely not normalized in all bottles of topical minoxidil due to various manufacturing errors that are expected. Furthermore, you cannot reasonably ensure that every milliliter of minoxidil contains 50 milligrams of it. Some may have less and some may very well have more simply due to how the minoxidil salts are distributed in the solution. Now, let's discuss a case from the Medical Journal of the Armed Forces India, Armed Forces India, where a 58-year-old male patient experienced refractory shock and pulmonary edema after accidentally consuming a 5% topical minoxidil solution. That's insane. The patient consumed around 20 milliliters, 20 milliliters of the minoxidil solution, which translates to a total of 1,000 milligrams. The typical oral dose of minoxidil for hypertension is between 10 to 40 milligrams per day, making this a massive overdose, a whopping 10 times the maximum oral minoxidil dosage. For those of you wondering about the weight conversion, 1,000 milligrams equates to one gram of minoxidil, indicating the sheer amount that this patient consumed. Despite immediate treatment, including intravenous saline, dopamine infusion, and supplementary oxygen, the patient's condition deteriorated, leading to persistent hypotension and tachycardia. Hypotension being low blood pressure and tachycardia being a racing of the heart. Mechanical ventilation was required and noradrenaline and vasopressin were added due to persistent hypotension. And those drugs are used to treat this man's hypotension due to ingesting so much minoxidil. And hypotension is low blood pressure. And the blood pressure is primarily low because his heart is slowing down due to ingesting so much minoxidil. So this would help speed up his heart rate, this would help increase the blood flow, and thus increase the blood pressure to a normal range, hopefully. Over the next 12 hours, the patient's condition started to stabilize, his blood pressure became normal, and his consciousness improved. After three days, however, the patient began to experience blurred vision and eye floaters in his eyes, a sign of bilateral papilledema. And papilledema is a medical term for swelling of the optic disc. And this is pretty bad because it can damage your eyes and you'll possibly go blind or just have permanent eye disorders. This development of bilateral papilledema was a unique case because it involves the swelling of the optic nerve and this had never been previously linked to minoxidil toxicity. This case serves as a reminder of the potentially life-threatening complications of ingesting topical minoxidil due to its potent vasodilatory effect. It is crucial to use this widely available over-the-counter drug properly to avoid these unintended consequences. So all in all, just stop drinking minoxidil. It makes no sense to do that. Stop drinking topical minoxidil. Stop thinking that you can follow this random dude from Reddit, username CumeshotDiva. Stop thinking you can follow his complete guide to orally taking topical minoxidil and be safe because his little calculation where, oh, if you just do one tiny drop of of minoxidil, topical, 5% topical minoxidil, then right away you'll be able to calculate that that one tiny drop is 1.25 milligrams. It could be three, could be four, could be eight, could be 10, the standard for administering people with high blood pressure, right? That 10 milligram to 40 milligram range. So it's very easy to overdose if you're consuming topical minoxidil, especially at a 5% concentration. It's not wise to do these things. And that's why this video is so long, because first I had to talk about why oral minoxidil, the tablet form lonitin, in and of itself is harmful because there is no dose dependent research that proves that, hey, if you take this dose 
of minoxidil, patients tended to have these side effects. It's mostly the case that people with their own genetic variation, you know, people being unique in their own genotypic characteristics, their unique genetic makeups are what determines what side effects they will have and the individual incidence of those side effects per, indiv per individual, if that makes any sense. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. Sorry for it being so long, but hopefully in this review video that I'm doing, um, you won't drink topical minoxidil. It's not a good idea. So see you on the next one. Peace. This is actually one of the studies that I was looking at that I brought up in this video just now. And the poster is saying in the title, drinking minoxidil is poison and could kill you. I see a lot of people talking about drinking this stuff. That's crazy. Take the pill, if anything, blah, 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 whatever. But then you have this person in the comment section who claims to be a med student who essentially is saying that this will only happen if you overdose topical minoxidil or taking too much minoxidil. When it hasn't been proven that minoxidil itself and its side effects are dose dependent, it really comes down to individual variations um, in, their, in their genetics and how they react to minoxidil in general. So this is completely asinine. Over here saying you will only experience it being this um, refractory shock. You'll only experience it if you drink a large amount of the solution or overdose with the pills. Just drinking the solution in a safe amount will not lead to a vasodilatory shock. And then people are shitting on the original post. This comment over here, I take it you were not blessed with deductive reasoning and someone saying that's why the world is going to shit. People like you have voting rights. You shouldn't be thinking that in your pipette, in that one milliliter pipette, that you're always going to get 50 milligrams of minoxidil and that you can somehow use a single drop and you can ensure that single drop will have 1.25 milligrams of minoxidil or, or whatever, right? It's not this unified process. You're not even sure that you're going to get completely in a 60 milliliter solution, a standard amount of minoxidil. You could be getting more in some solutions, less due to how the process is in various plants. Sometimes processing plants mess up and put too much, put too little. This is the issue we have to contend with. So calling the OP dumb because he's trying to alert you to not drinking topical minoxidil is kind of crazy. And these people are clearly just stupid and are just, I don't know, they, they just don't like hearing bad news or potential side effects about their medications. Like we hear about finasteride being, you know, dangerous and it's dangerous because a very, 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 very small subset of people get side effects. And those side effects typically go away with continual usage or taking a break or just stopping it altogether. And typically um, people like to say, oh, post-finasteride syndrome is a thing. And then they attack finasteride, even though it hasn't been proven in, uh, in any studies. But when it comes to the side effects of minoxidil being dose dependent, that hasn't been really proven. And when we look at that low dose oral minoxidil study, from those various authors that was posted into the Journal of American Dermatology in 2021. They even state that themselves it's not dose dependent, but then they kind of contradict themselves by saying, oh, but at least in our study we found out that it was safe. Mm, not necessarily.